Okay, good morning everyone. Um, <clears throat> before I start my sermon, I ask all of you to exchange greetings. So why don't you say hello to your neighbors next to you, right, left, front and back. Okay. Today, I am going to share the Word of God with you, with the team that says, Good to be near God. All of you, please read the title. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah, of course. Our loving God, our Father, being closer to Him is the best thing we can do as good Christians. Uh, today, I'm going to share from the book of Psalms, chapter 73. It has 28 verses. I'm not going to read every verses, but I think in order to understand the concept or the idea in the chapter, I recommend you to read the whole verses when you read by yourself. But today we're going to read only a few verses from there. There was a man, his name was Asaph, and Asaph was the one who composed this psalm. Psalm chapter 73. One day, Asaph was not only physically, but also in his thought, he became far away from God. Physically, he was far away from the temple. In the Old Testament, as you all know, the temple is the symbol of the presence of God. Whenever people wanted to meet God, whenever they wanted to talk to God, Whenever they want to hear the word of God, they're supposed to go to the temple in the Old Testament. But today, Asaph, he is far away from the temple. Not only from the temple, but also he was far away from God in his thought. It seems like he has some struggle. Assume this man here is Asaph. Look the way he's sitting away, sitting under the tree. What do you think is the feeling of this man when you see this picture? Okay. Confused. Okay, thank you. You think he's confused? Disappointed. Disappointed. Obviously, he's not happy. He is into very deep thought. He's thinking. I'm very curious, what is he thinking? Now let's read the first verse. One, two. Okay, okay. He said, surely God is good for Israel. Remember, this man is Asaph. He's not Israel. He says, what? God is good. Surely, no doubt, God is good for Israel. Okay? And he says again, to those who are pure in their heart. This is not a speech. It's not a proclamation, verbal proclamation. It's a claim, but he is just thinking in his mind, telling himself that, I know, I grew up singing God is good. You know this song, God is good, all the time, okay. So Israel knows the goodness of God. They've been learning from their childhood, Sunday school or church, at home, everywhere, the sermon says that God is good. The lyric says that God is good. No doubt. That's why he says, surely God is good. Please, all of you say, God is good. God is good. Okay. Now, the problem is when it comes to verse 2. He says, but as for me, generally speaking, God is good. For Israel, God is good. For many people, God is good. But as for me, there is a problem. Let's read it. But as for me, what happened? My feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. Oh, what happened to him? He says, I am now on a shaky ground. When it comes to my faith, when it comes to my life personally, I am struggling. You know, most of the time as Christians, when we go to church, when we are together with the community, with our family, 
When we hear the word of God, we don't have any problem. The shaking comes when we are alone, when we try to understand our private life, our personal life, when we encounter personal things, then we say, oh, almost I'm slipped. I'm nearly lost my foot. Um, uh, let me show you a picture here. <laughs> what will happen if this man steps on this peel of banana? Of course, avias, we know what will happen, right? So this man by the name Asaph, he feels like he is in this situation in his spiritual life. He's not firm. But you may ask, why? What happened to him? Now, when you read chapter 73, the reason also is mentioned there. Verse 3. Let's read it together. One, two. Sorry. <laughs> One, two. Now this is the problem. This is the problem. He is watching someone, observing carefully. I don't know whether he is watching on Facebook or TikTok or YouTube. I'm not quite sure. On TV, back then there is no any kind of things that I have mentioned. But I just wanted you to make a connection. He was looking to a wicked people. Wicked people means those who do not know God or maybe those who dis disregard God, who do not have faith, who do not want to follow the instructions and the commandments given in the Bible from God. They are known as wicked people. And now Asaph and his neighbor, in his town, there are many people, wicked people, and he starts to see them. And then what happened? He saw their prosperity, quote unquote, actually. It seems like they are prospered in many ways when he looked at them. Then he started to feel envied, jealous. This is the reason. I think personally, this man did a very unfair comparison. It's not really fair to compare the holy with unclean one, especially the godly with the ungodly. I think he was trapped into this unfair comparison. He saw the prosperity, which looked like prosperity to him, but it was just a dimension, a temporary thing. He didn't realize that. He just started to compare himself with them and he became desperate. Maybe, as um, Lucas said, confused. Maybe disappointed. When we compare unfairly with those who are ungodly, definitely the feeling will be unhappy. The sentiment will be very much demanding. My question is, who do you compare yourself with? Every time we are on a social media, there is a fake success or maybe prosperity that we will see and we start to compare sometimes. Who knows? He observed the wicked and he start to be jealous and despise his own life. Look on the picture here. Is it really fair to compare the healthy apple and juice with cork and something roasted? How is this guy feeling here, the one with apple? Definitely jealous, not happy. What if I try that? Why my parents are forbidding me not to take this fast food, not to eat cork, uh, drink cork? Why? Look at him, he's free, carefree. He eats whatever he want, he wanted. I wish I am him. And sometimes we may have that feeling, resentment against our parents or our guardians or whatever. Do you think this is fair? The, the muscular man, probably who is exercising every day, hmm? weightlifter, competing with someone 
who is not trained well. I call this, this is unfair comparison. But sometimes we are also really unfair for ourselves. Look at this picture here. What animals do you see here? Okay, monkeys, birds, and what? Penguin, elephant, and what? Seal. Do you see the fish, the seal, and what is that, the other one? There. Is it a goat or a dog? <laughs> okay, let's the dog. Now, the text says this one. For a fair election, selection, everybody has to take the same kind of exam. And then what is the exam? Please climb up the tree. Do you think this is fair? What would be the point if I compare myself vocally with Beyonce? Definitely that would be a disappointment, right? I should be fair for myself. I'm not saying we, can, we, we do not need to compare. Of course, comparing ourselves in a healthy way could be a way of innovation or even to maximize our potential. I know that, but we need to be fair. We need to know what to compare with who or with what. Compare, but be fair. Would you please tell to your friend next to you, compare, but be fair. Let's come back to Asaph now. Verse 4 to 14, uh, 12, if you read, you will see how he looked to the prosperity of the wicked. Number one, when he looked at them, they are carefree people. You know, as Christians, we have to control our emotions. We have to control our words. We have to control our actions. We have so many controls. In fact, the last fruit of the Spirit mentioned in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, that is what? Self-control. But when Asaph looked to the wicked people, they are carefree. They speak whatever they want. They can do whatever they wanted. In fact, their motto says, if it pleases you, just do it. Then when, we, when, when he compares himself with them, Definitely, he is so much desperate. They are very arrogant. There is no law to humble them, the wicked people. Sometimes they follow a violent way to achieve their desire or their goals because they don't, they don't have law. They are lawless. And then to him, they seem to prosper despite their disregard to God. In his mind, remember, he's sitting there and thinking. He says, oh, look at me. I always choose to follow the way of righteousness. But they are carefree. They speak whatever they want. They do whatever they want. And look their life. They look like they are prospered. This has caused Asaph to question about God's justice. Still, he's sitting there under a tree and... He's asking himself, is really God just? Now we call this personal doubt and struggle. Because he looked to the wicked and he thought they are prospered and he had this question now, now he is in a doubt, he's struggling. And he says this, surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and I have washed my hands in innocence. It's in vain that I put a lot of effort to be a righteous person. It is in vain that I followed God. This is what he was thinking, especially seeing himself, his own suffering, juxtaposed with the wicked prosperity. This is literally comparing himself with the wicked people. Then he said, is really God there? Is he really just? What is the point of me being holy or righteous? Doubt, struggle. Now his faith is being attacked. But nobody attacked actually. He just opened his mind for temptation. He wrestled in his thought. He wrestled expressing this doubt 
questioning God, very severely attacking his own trust in the Lord. And now we found how he really feels as he was sitting there under a tree and thinking. He was what? He was deeply troubled. Let's read verse 15. One, two. Now this means he was confused, like he's thinking, and now he says, but if I speak like this now, I will be stumbling block. I will deceive. I will uh, make many people lose their faith. Should I say this or keep it within myself? It's a struggle. And then verse 16. When I try to understand all this, what happened? It troubled me. When you are troubled, what do you do? This man, he isolated himself from the community of God. He isolated himself from God and from the temple. Sat there by himself because he is troubled. And where did the trouble come from? It comes from the unfair comparison. What could be the solution? How can we help this person? If we are there, what can we do? What could we do? Anything? Anyway, this man, as I've already told you, he is a Jew. Okay? And according to their tradition, there is a time to go to the temple. It's required. Even if he have this struggle in his mind, when the worship time comes, he should go. So it was time from where he was sitting heavily, he stands up, and now he's going to where? God's sanctuary. Sanctuary. What is sanctuary in Korean? I wrote there. If it is correct, I don't know. <laughs> is that right? Sanctuary. Sanctuary means a temple where people go to worship God. Okay? When he comes closer to God now, Actually, he went there to pray. He went there to worship. He went there to listen to the word of God. The sanctuary is the symbol of the presence of God. Now he came closer to God. And when he came to the, when he entered into God's sanctuary, something happened. He gained understanding. Sometimes we call that insight, enlightenment. Now he's coming from that dark thought. Why? Because he came closer to God. And God is light. Anything that makes us being troubled when we come closer to God, it becomes clear. In his thought and in his action, practically, Asaph came to closer to God. And he said this one, verse 17. Let's read it. One, two. You see, it troubled me a lot. But this trouble was till I entered the sanctuary of God. When I enter into the presence of God, I understood their final destiny. There here refers to the wicked people. I understood the final destiny of the wicked people. And what is the final destiny of the wicked people? Definitely it's distraction. Their prosperity is temporary. Okay? It's not eternal. It's not for long time. It's time limited. It's temporary. And he said they will eventually, what? Face the judgment of God for every action, for, for every word, for every activities that they have done. There will be judgment of God. Therefore, wicked people, no matter how they look prospered in front of our eyes, their final destiny is destruction. He knew that now. It feels like he wake up from his sleep. sleep. He's not anymore on a shaky ground. And he comes to a conclusion. This is his conclusion. Shall we read it? One, two. He has already 
experienced the feeling of being far away from God. Now he says, I am happy, I am fulfilled when I am closer to God. And he says, it's good for me. Surely it's good for me to come closer to God. What is your trouble? Hardships that you are facing. Something that you do not understand when it comes to your personal life. Yes, we are Christians. Yes, every day we pray. But sometimes there is, there is a temptation of being far away from God in our thought because of so many reasons. But Asaph's advice is this one. He says, it is good for us as Christians to come closer to God because he is sovereign. He will be our refuge. We will be protected. And today my message for all of us is this. As we are going forward in our academic and spiritual life, as we belong to this Christian community, sometimes if we have some doubt or if our trust and faith is tempted by the things that we see in the community, in the world, the solution is not going far away, but it is coming closer to God. In your prayers, in your devotion, in your thought, you can come closer to God so that everything might be clear for you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray.